Welcome back everybody! Well, visiting us today from Madrid, the KPS MT900. Thank you KPS for sending in for the review. Yeah, as I mentioned, this actually shipped from Spain. Got here, wow, oh so fast. Uh, great shipping from KPS. Uh, a Spanish company. So, gracias, gracias. Muchos gracias. Okay, we have some Maztec green going on, that's for sure. Nice forest green and uh, it is really easy on the eyes. But let's start off with what you get in the box. Well, first of all, you get this pretty colorful box, uh, solid, and uh, from KPS. Now, my only gripe about this actually is um, they don't really tell you much. Don't really tell you a whole lot on the box. It's a 6,000 count multimeter uh, maximum, but you know, we don't have any specs per se. Very vague, very vague on the box. As well, on the side, it says Fabricante uh, Solución Energía. I really apologize for my Spanish, but um, so at first I thought perhaps this was actually manufactured in Spain and I verified with KPS and it is actually made in China. Now unlike many multimeters you do get this really gorgeous bag. It's nice and padded and uh, I mean just generally speaking good high quality bag. Um, and, you know and rightly so because this multimeter yeah, well, it's not cheap. $75 US this is what I was told it is retailing for. Um, Purchase links will be in the description below, but yeah, it is definitely not a cheapo. 75 bucks US, we'll talk about that more in a second. Okay, what do you get in the bag? Well, look at this. You actually get a certificate of calibration uh, with a stamp. I'm assuming that's some sort of a date code. Uh, it is basically telling you that this certifies and guarantees the product has been inspected and tested in accordance with the published specifications. So it's a calibration certificate. I mean, you know, in the real world, would this suffice? Uh, I don't know. But uh, also you get this little manual. And you know what? This is my first gripe with the meter. This ain't a freaking manual. This is really nothing more than a basic sheet about the company. It, it tells you nothing about the meter itself. Absolutely nothing. Um, so a manual, it is you not. You have a barcode here that you can skew with your phone, a uh, smartphone, and it should take you to the KPS website to download the actual manual. But it didn't work! It didn't work for me, so I had to um, send them an email and say, uh, where can I get the manual? So, you know, I really wish they just would have enclosed the manual in this gorgeous case. Would have made life a whole lot easier. Finally, you get a set of test leads as well. Um, you know, a little disappointed here for this price point. I was expecting the test leads to be a little better than, you know, your generic cheapo test leads. Basically, these are what you get with the cheapos, right? So, uh, no branding from KPS whatsoever. It says CAT 3, 1000 volts, 10 amps, uh, you know? Yeah, so uh, a little disappointed with the bundled leads. Now the KPS MT900 is a smart multimeter, that's right, smart, but it also has other functionality as well. So not just smart, but also not so smart, or, or you know, I'd rather say smarter. Fit and finish wise, a very nicely done. Now the boot is part of the meter itself, does not come off, it is molded to the membrane, so you're yeah, not gonna pull off this boot. Um, but that being said, it has a very nice feel. It is a solid multimeter, and I really have no doubt that this can take a licking and keep on multi-ticking. Does that mean? Now the tilt stand, standing bail, whatever you like to call these things. Uh, another faux pas here. It really doesn't come out very far. Look at that. That's it in terms of, you know, I would prefer to have that go down a little more, have a better viewing angle, but it's rather rigid as it stands. But uh, eh, powered by two AAA batteries accessed via one screw there. Now it's hidden under there, but we do have that ETL uh, certification, um, Intertech, Intertech certifi certified. So it should be, you know, in terms of safety, uh, a little better than the average uh, cheapo. But you know what, once again, we'll soon find out. No other safety certifications, what have you, on the body of the meter itself. Once again, at this price point, uh, would be really nice to see uh, a little step up in the certification department. Yeah. Rotary selector switch starting off in the smart position main off. Volts ACDC up to 600 volts. Resistance up to 10 mega ohm. Continuity. Frequency from 60 hertz to 3 kilohertz. At the top of the meter we have our function switch. Beside that we have our hold as well as backlight. Over here we have the maximum and finally the far right we have our NCV. And way at the bottom we have our common or ground and on the right we have our resistance, continuity, voltage and frequency input. Yes, it does not do current. Not even milliamps. 
And at the top meter as well, you'll notice we have an LED. This is for outputting a visual. Uh, to overall, this is a sparse multimeter. Man, not a lot in terms of functionality. Whoa, but uh, well, is it any good at what it does? Let's find out. And that tilt stand just driving me crazy right now. It's just not coming out enough. It's, it's almost like it's standing completely vertical, which I don't like, but anyway, all right. Turn on this multimeter, shall we? Starting off, and let's take a look at that display. Whoa, LCD, 6,000 count. Um, looking small here, let's switch it over. And uh, yeah, those are tiny, tiny digits. Now they're quite refined looking, but uh, you know, rather small. Uh, let's try out that backlight. So backlight maybe helps a little bit, but um, yeah. It is a really tiny, tiny font. So if you wear glasses, you might find this a little awkward to look at, especially with that weird viewing angle. Um, ah, overall, I guess it's pretty clean. A little bit of bleeding on the right-hand side. Uh, yeah, you do lose some of it as those angles change. In terms of the selector switch as well, you know, it's not bad, it's not bad. It has that nice clack and clack. It does get to those ranges once again with authority. Uh, it's not gonna get lost in between ranges. Um, yeah, you know what, right, it's not bad, I like it. With our precision voltage reference standard, 5.00 volts is what we want to see. Let's start off in smart mode, shall we? And 4.98 volts, a little off. Not terribly bad, but uh, not spot on, that's for sure. Let's try the manual mode. And 4.98 volts as well, so yeah, all right, there you go. It's that time again, everybody. Multimeter of the week. Holy moly cannoli! So what is the vent of the week this week? Well, guess what? Multimeters that don't have tilt stands. I mean, come on! What is this? We're not just talking happens now and again. Look at them all. Look at them all. None of these meters have tilt stands. The Anang 620A. This is one heck of a great multimeter, but it has no freaking tilt stand. Why? Why? So many meters today are shipping without any support, and I mean tilt stands so-called smart meters well they look dumb now don't they look at this i mean for real and this and yeah x tech 2 where's the tilt stand ah uh, and geez louise yokogawa no tilt stand holy moly can you imagine building an airplane with no wheels or keep playing with something to support my meter no way absolutely no excuses big or small tilt stands for them all yeah Okay, let's try out that smart functionality in AC mode, in smart mode. And boom, it switches, no problem. 118.9 volts, just shy of 120. So yeah, looking good. And there at the top, you can see automatically, we have our frequency coming in at just under 60 Hertz. Now, smart mode is also good for voltage AC, DC, as well as continuity and resistance. So let's just try it in resistance mode. For the heck of it, let's start off with this, uh, oh well. 10k and that was pretty close and if we just switch over to the regular resistance mode let's do the same 10k resistor yeah so really no slowdown whatsoever in terms of speed on that smart mode at least for resistance that's pretty cool okay well since we're in resistance let's stay in there shall we yeah no worries here 9.99 1k Pretty smooth, 0.998, very close. Let's try the 100 ohm. Yeah. One, try that 100 ohm precision resistor coming up as 0 0.099, just shy, very good. Let's see how quick it is to range, sitting at nine mega ohm right now. Eight mega ohm, seven, five mega ohm, a little slow, three mega ohm, and one mega ohm. Ah, not so bad. Already Aphrodite, here we go. Continuity, you know I love it. Stock default probes. Remember last time how good it was? Oh, it was amazing on that cheap Neotech. Wow, probably the best continuity I've heard thus far in any multimeter. This crazy Neotech, go figure. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh yeah. We are in a different class. Slow as molasses. Oh, wow. Ah, really unusable. Oh, let's try the broken. Here we go. Oh, it is 
still super, super slow. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, <laughs> you suck at continuity. Sorry. Yeah, not good. Not good at all. Seventy one point four DBA maximum output in continuity. Now it does have that NCV non-contact voltage at the top. Um, usually that is well, by and far pretty useless on a lot of multimeters these days. But let's try it out now. Funny enough, with the KPS MT nine hundred, you don't have to be in any NCV range. You simply hold down on that NCV button. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh, that seemed pretty good. Let me just bring that into camera a little bit okay, better. Here we go. I'm gonna hold down on that NCV one more time. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. Super, super fast. Very, very sensitive as well. Oh yeah, very nice. Let's try the light switch. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No worries here. All right, let's try that mains panel. Here we go. Oh yeah. No worries here. Beauty. So I don't know, maybe have to spend 75 US to get good NCV. <sighs> Finally, we are in frequency. Well, it's a very weird frequency range. Um, yeah, 60 Hertz to three kilohertz, uh, but 50% duty cycle under 60 Hertz, just under 60 Hertz here. Uh, it's just plugged into the standard outlet. Looking good. Uh, nice feature to have. So we do have that uh, duty cycle as well as the frequency all in one foul swoop. Very nice. Okay, here we are on the inside. Teardown time. I love it. Um, disappointing, once again, 75 bucks US and we don't have any shielding. Come on, at this price point, we gotta see shielding. It's absolutely ludicrous. Do have some fairly nice ridges here for blast protection, what have you. There are the connectors for these two AAA batteries that feed onto the PCB. Um, other than that, it that is it. Uh, pretty decent quality plastics though. The ABS is nice, nice molding. Uh, there you go. Slight improvement here in terms of the overall, uh, you know, bang for buck. Yes, look at that. Input jacks are in there, nice and solid. There are actually double solders, as you can see, both sides. Really nice blobs of solder as well. Those are not going anywhere. Um, so connectors are split, but nonetheless, very nicely done. And look at that. We've got one, two, three mobs and two PT, so PTCs for input protection. Uh, really, really nice to see. Now you probably noticed, ain't no fuses. That's because it doesn't do current. So no fuses are required. Ah. Here we have at the very top, that's the Hotec HT1621B. That is the LCD controller. And right beside him, we have the little ESOFT 32 bit MC. Boy, look at all these multiplexers. One, two, three, four, at least four. Over here on the side of the PCB, those are the uh, 74HC4053Ds, two channel analog multiplexers. Um, nice big speaker over here at the top. Uh, not much else going on though. Very clean PCB. I have to say absolutely no flux, no residue whatsoever. Uh, it's looking super, super clean. July 20th, 2018, manufacturer of MS8303D. So this is actually a rebranded Maztec. It's not even an original OEM PCB. <sighs> All right, here we are on the other side. Oh, wow, look at that. We have two pads, only two pads on this selector switch. Uh, it's the same style invoked by uh, you know other manufacturers like Keysight, for instance. We have that rubber inlay here uh, instead of the mechanical switch. So, but you know what? These things in the long term seem to last just as good as the balls and springs. So no worries about that whatsoever. Here's the soft touch buttons at the top and really nice ABS, but uh, yeah, that is it. That is all groovy. Let's look at the other side of the PCB, shall we? <laughs> wow, have you ever seen so few tracks? Oh my God, but you know what? I don't know if you can tell or not, but they are greased. Yes, they do have some dielectric on there, I'm assuming. Good job, at least they grease these few tracks. Something else worth mentioning, and wow, is it ever cool. Here are a couple of nice big solder blobs, and what are they holding? Yeah, that is some major NCV going on. Look at that metal filament encompasses the entire width of that PCB. It is thick and it is mean, lean NCV machine. That is why we're getting such awesome non-contact voltage on this multimeter. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. I wish we saw this uh, implementation more in the multimeter realm. Absolutely gorgeous NCV. 
very, very nice. But uh, nothing else going on here at all. There's the main LCD panel, of course, the uh, Elastomar. And uh, really, that is it, slim pickings. So uh, there you have it, in a nutshell. Closing thoughts of the KPS MT900. Wow, you know what? Unfortunately, uh, it's a no-fly zone. Oh, wow. I don't know where to start, really. It just doesn't do enough for the price of emission. It doesn't do capacitance, no current, not even milliamps. And you know what, the visual LED, they don't even use it in continuity. It's a really bare bones multimeter. Now it does come with that calibration certificate, but is it traceable? Is it actually any good in the real world? I don't know. You do get a great looking case and all in all, it is really nicely packaged. Fit and finish wise, no complaints whatsoever. Top notch, uh, really, really well done. But let's face it, $75 US is not chump change. And unfortunately, in this case, I think you can do much better for the money. The KPS MT900 gets a disappointing two out of five stars. KPS was kind enough to send me a few other instruments as well, so stay tuned for those coming up in the not too distant future. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.